Good morning, church. Uh, this is our last week with a nearly empty sanctuary. We have a couple of folks in here who are helping lead worship today, but uh, beginning next week, you are welcome to join us if your health and your comfort level permit. And there is uh, nothing wrong with staying at home and watching online, just as there's nothing wrong with coming and being here in person. So I'm sure people will switch back and forth between things as uh, personal schedules require. Um, I think that's all we have by the way of announcements. I do remind you to take some time during the week, go on Facebook, and watch the little tutorial video of how to do sign language to the doxology because we'll start doing that uh, next week when we gather. And let us worship. This week we have been sowers, planting seeds of gratitude for those who serve our community, planting seeds of love for our congregation, planting seeds of joy in our own hearts. Whether these seeds land on fertile soil, on rocks, or among weeds, we trust they will take root and grow according to God's plan. Amen. Scripture reading for today is from Matthew 13, verse 1 through 23. That same day, Jesus went out of the house and sat by the lake. Such large crowds gathered around him that he got into a boat and sat in it while all the people stood on the shore. Then he told them many things in parables, saying, A farmer went out to sow his seed. As he was scattering the seed, some fell along the path, and the birds came and ate it up. Some fell on rocky places where it did not have much soil. It sprang up quickly because the soil was shallow. But when the sun came up, 
The plants were scorched and they were withered because they had no root. Other seed fell among the thorns, which grew up and choked the plants. Still other seed fell on the good soil, where it produced a crop, a hundred, sixty, or thirty times what was sown. Whoever has ears, let them hear. The disciples came to him and asked, Why do you speak to the people in parables? He replied, Because the knowledge of the secrets of the kingdom of heaven has been given to you, but not to them. Whoever has will be given more, and they will have an abundance. Whoever does not have, even what they have will be taken from them. This is why I speak to them in parables. Though seeing, they do not see. Though hearing, they do not hear or understand. In them is fulfilled the prophecy of Isaiah. You will be ever hearing, but never understanding. You will be ever seeing, but never perceiving. For this people's heart has become calloused. They hardly hear with their ears, and they have closed their eyes. Otherwise, they might see with their eyes, hear with their ears, understand with their hearts, and in turn, I would heal them. But blessed are the eyes because they see, and your ears because they hear. For truly I tell you, many prophets and righteous people long to see what you see, but did not see it, and long to hear what you hear, but did not hear it. Listen then to what you see, but did not or Listen then to what the parable of the sower means. When anyone hears the message about the kingdom and does not understand it, the evil one comes and snatches away what the sower has sown in their heart. This is the seed sown along the path. The seed falling on rocky ground refers to someone who hears the word and at once receives it with joy. But since they have no root, they last only a short time. When trouble or persecution comes because of the word, they quickly fall away. The seed falling among the thorns refers to someone who hears the word, but worries of this life and the deceitfulness of wealth choke the word, making it unfruitful. But the seed falling on good soil refers to someone who hears the word and understands it. This is the one who produces a crop, yielding 160 or 30 times what was sown. We join me in the spirit of prayer. Gracious and loving God, we gather to hear your word to us this day. May your words inspire us and help us to be the people that you call us to be. And may my words reflect your words so that what we hear might be your truth. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. So I don't know about you, but I, I kind of love the parables because they're like extended metaphors. Only Jesus never quite seems to mix metaphors the way most preachers do. There's something familiar about it, right? Like a story about planting seeds but it's compared to something unfamiliar, something we can't quite grasp, like the kingdom of God. It's particularly fun, though, to talk about the parable of the sower this morning, to shed new light on it, since we have a stained glass window here in the sanctuary that depicts that story. And just recently, the old yellowed plexiglass on the outside has been removed from it, and new light is literally streaming through it. And that's how it is with parables. Each time we hear them, we hear them in a new light because something that we've experienced helps us to understand the parable in a new way. Now, for several years, I thought of the parable of the sower purely in terms of evangelism, of sharing our faith and hoping that it will take root. Then, when I was working on the staff of my home church in Pittsfield as the coordinator of outreach ministries, I started to develop a new understanding of the parable. 
One of my responsibilities on the staff was to administer the distribution of the church's funds for the needy. Now that's a daunting responsibility, deciding whether to give someone financial assistance, and if so, how much. I had a steady flow of visitors through my office with heartbreaking stories. People about to be evicted from their apartments. People who had gotten a job but didn't have a car and needed bus fare to go to work. People who lost their ID and needed money to get a new one, which often also involved money to get a copy of a birth certificate in order to apply for a new ID. People who needed medication. And one guy who came in uh, just before Mother's Day to ask for $5 to buy a geranium to place on his mother's grave. And after a few months of hearing these stories and deciding that I'd help this person and I might need some more information about helping another, I happened to reread the parable of the sower. And it occurred to me that this parable isn't just about seeds of faith and evangelism. It's about sharing any kinds of resources, financial resources, time, love. I placed myself in the role of the sower then, thought of myself spreading these seeds of financial assistance and becoming more comfortable with the idea that some of it would land and take root and grow strong and be helping someone who was in a temporary financial crisis. And some of it was going to land on rocks where it couldn't take root, and some of it was choked out by weeds or snatched up by birds, and it didn't help the person achieve long-term stability. I could never be sure what would happen. You see, I wasn't planting a neat little garden that I'd mapped out. I was trusting things beyond my control and hoping for the best, just like God does with us. You know, God provides us with so much, and some of it takes root, and some of it gets frittered away. You'd think God would stop being so generous, so willy-nilly with the seeds, but it's not the case. God just keeps sowing seeds far and wide. And that's what we did this week as a church. Now, for years, right, you've taken an annual mission trip up to Maine, and you've participated in a neatly organized week of helping people even relied on other organizations to assess those needs and find good soil for us, worthy recipients. But this year, every well-planned activity in our lives has been thrown out the window as we try to stop the spread of COVID-19. We waited anxiously in the spring to see whether our mission trip would be possible. And even if it was possible, whether it made sense to go. And like many other organizations, Camp Metroana kept weighing options, looking for guidance from the federal and state governments and from the New England Annual Conference and from the Camping Association, and finally arrived at the decision that it did not make sense to hold camp this year. We were all saddened by the news, even though we fully expected that that was going to be the decision. Well, it didn't take long before someone asked, could we do something locally instead? You know, several families had already blocked out the dates on the calendar for the mission trip. Parents had requested vacation time. And things were opening up just enough that we might be able to do something. Well, there were a few brainstorming Zoom meetings, and we discovered our mission possible, not so random acts of kindness. It started with the idea of putting together some gift baskets for nursing home staff, and, and then the seeds started spreading. Um, 
adding post offices and maybe thanking a couple of church members. And the next thing we knew, it was pretty much every member of the church family. It would have been impossible for any one of us to do alone. But with six families, it became mission possible. And we aren't yet sure what's going to happen with these seeds. Some are going to be blown away by the wind, but others are working their way into the soil. A friend of mine in the Berkshires tagged me in a Facebook post on Thursday to say that our Mission Possible inspired her to start something similar in her town and with her church. I've discovered over the years that every church has its own unique identity. You'd think that might be kind of obvious, but we're trying to sort of think of churches as though all churches are somewhat alike, but they're really very different. And over the years, I've found a connection between a church's identity and its stained glass windows, which always leaves me wondering whether it's the images that then the church chose to put in for their stained glass that reflect who they already were, or whether looking at those images is what shapes them into who they become. It might, might be the topic for a PhD sometime. Over the past few weeks, We've had painters working on the exterior of the church, as I said, and that in itself is another mission possible story, but I'll save that one for another day. The painters removed that plexiglass that has been on our stained glass windows for years, plexiglass that yellowed over time. And as the windows have been uncovered, the beauty is stunning. The light streams through, and if you're outside the sanctuary, you can actually tell what the stained glass window depicts now. You couldn't do that with the the plexi on there. Today, we see the parable of the sower in all its glory, and next week, and the week after, and the week after that, the rest of you will have a chance to see that. So maybe this story has been part of our DNA all along reminding us that it's not about working in some neat, orderly fashion, but spreading the seeds of God's love far and wide and seeing where it might take hold. One of my favorite quotes of all time is from anthropologist Margaret Mead. I'm sure many of you know this quote. Never doubt that a small group of thoughtful, committed citizens can change the world. Indeed, it's the only thing that ever has. Will you, beloved community known as Blackstone Valley United Methodist Church, you are living proof of that, sowing the seeds of God's love far and wide within and beyond these stained glass windows. What a joy to be on this journey with you. Amen. When I found out that our mission trip to Mechuana had been canceled, I was both relieved and disappointed at the same time. I was glad I didn't have to spend that time getting everything ready for the trip, but I was sad for those who had signed up for the trip and weren't going to be able to go. I knew that I was not pleasing God in my response. Well, God responded to my conflict in the form of an email from Jen Lutton. She stated that she felt we needed to do something locally and to figure out a way to show our church love to those in our neighborhood. That was the spark I needed to fuel the fire that had been put out with the cancellation of our mission trip. After having a virtual meeting with Jen, Kim, Rachel, and Christine, the Love God and People 
Not So Random Acts of Kindness 2020 mission campaign was born. In a few short weeks, families signed up, phone calls were made, ideas for goodie bags were suggested, and a schedule was created. It was amazing to see how God was at work during every step of the process. As some of you know, I'm an event specialist for the courtyard in Milford. Part of being an event specialist is that I have to assist in planning meetings for our hotel, and I need to ensure that everything goes off without a hitch. I had that same philosophy when it came to this mission campaign. I then started to focus on the process and ensuring everything went smoothly, that I forgot to that I started to forget what we were doing and why we were doing it. The day before we filled the goodie bags, Mike, Kim, and myself were standing in Faith Hall looking at the bags that needed to be filled. And I started to voice my concerns about the timing for the next day. Mike stopped me and said, we need to remember what we are doing is more important than the gifts, and then how it gets done. I felt like God had just hit me with a two by four and put me back in place and in the right frame of mind. There were a few hiccups along the way, but as Laurel pointed out during one of our Zoom meetings, no one knew what the hiccups was, were and how it was supposed to exactly happen except for me. Once again, God spoke to me through someone else to make me realize that everything worked out. One of the best parts of the mission campaign were the families that participated. There were two families that joined the campaign that weren't part of the original trip. Caroline and I were able to assist with everything because it was local, and it, we made it possible for entire families to participate, and not just certain people. I want to thank all the members of the mission campaign for their hard work and dedication. We truly showed the Blackstone Valley how our church has left the building and is spreading God's love. I especially want to thank Jen Mutton for providing that spark and getting us to where we are today.
please join me in an attitude of prayer. <clears throat> Dear Lord, thank you for this day of being and for being our master gardener, for providing the seed, soil, sun, and rain that we need to do your will. Thank you also for allowing us to have a small part as laborers in your garden, tending the soil of your love and feeling that love reflected back to us many times over. This week, and indeed every week, we have an opportunity to work the fields of love in the beautiful garden that is your world. Forgive us when we choose to let the weeds of doubt grow in our heart. Pardon us when we act as the rocks, being a hindrance to your kingdom. Nurture in us the seeds of love and compassion for our fellow man, today and every day, and help us be examples of your son's compassionate concern for the world as we follow this week's motto, love God and others. Please be with our congregation, especially those who are hurting or in need today. Open our eyes to see needs and to comfort each other. Be with Laura, Molly, Glenn, Paul, Jill, Heidi, George, Noonie, Ed, Billy, and Charlotte. Be with those who struggle with health concerns, preventing them from venturing out. Help to heal the deep racial tensions in our world and help us to bring healing and wholeness to our broken world. Be with the healthcare workers and those who are on the front lines of the fight we are all so aware of. Especially, Lord, be with those I have not mentioned today who are sick or downtrodden, broken or lost. Be their guiding light and help them to know your love today as we pray the prayer you taught us saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us from evil. Thine is the kingdom, and the temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Each week we uh, share our gifts with one another, with the church, to sow these seeds of kindness in the world. And so we celebrate the great generosity of this congregation as we um, give thanks for all that God has given us uh, and uh, use that to make a difference in this world and bring the kingdom just that much closer so that all might know the joy that we have come to know. Let's pray. Oh God, just as you have so generously sown your seeds of love and grace upon us, seeds that grow and seeds that sometimes blow away in the wind or are snatched up 
by others. Inspire us, too, to be sowers of your love and grace and use all of our gifts and all of our very being that we might spread your love in this world. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. As we end our time together, let us go forth as agents of God's mission, sowing seeds of love and grace wherever we go, so that God's kingdom may blossom among us. And all God's people say, Amen. There's no